Well, it was from like a major process, uh, major profit version. Uh huh. So yeah, I think this is the Isaiah's, you know, writing of Psalms eighty three, the beginning and how the the Confederate came to be. Well, Confederacy. See, I never thought about it that way. Like, I think you got a point. Like, uh, we will see in the next chapter the the copying the copying of the image of another god when we look and taste what god it is and you know it, it is going to connect to psalms 83 it, 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 you know um it's funny because what we're going to read is we're going to read about how powerful syria was now it's it's not talked about as far as I'm, I know anymore in the scripture, not even in the future prophecies. Syria will, no, it's, it's just gone. It is. And people don't understand how closely <clears throat> tied it was to the, the Hebrews. Well, Good point. this should set people uh, a little more on the path of how tied they were to each other, you know, um, just from the description uh, from above looking down. Yeah. It's about to start getting juicy, though. It was already juicy, but now it's start. This is like the the tea that everybody been waiting to sip and like to start to start naming names. This is where people get interested. Right. Well, you ready? Yep, I'm ready. All right. And three and two and action. Thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. I have Joe on the phone. Hello, Joe. Shalom, everybody. What's going on? Shalom, Lex. Shalom, Joe. We are in uh, Isaiah chapter 7. This is a special, special chapter for me. This is one of those chapters that, that brought me to life or brought me to where I am today. This is one of the path is open chapters. The path is open. You can see the path. About ready to start? Yep, I'm ready. <clears throat> Whenever you'd like to start. All right, Isaiah 7, 1. And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramalia, king of Israel, went, to, went, toward, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. Oh, all right, hold on right there. <coughs> so... Ahaz is the king of Judah, right? Ahaz, son of Jotham, son of Uzzah, king of Judah. That Rezin, king of Syria, and Bekah, king of Israel. So it's Syria and Israel versus Judah. Am I saying that right? Yep. All right, let's go. And it was told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate, confederate with Ephraim. And his heart was moved, and the heart of his people, as the trees of the wood, are moved with the wind. So, then said the issue unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou, and Shiar Jashel, thou son. And at the end of the conduit of the upper pool and the highway of the fillers' field, now, here we have being told, Isaiah, go and meet your king and go and meet your son at the conduit of the upper pool, at the hallway of the upper pool, 
towards the highway of the Fuller's Field. Fuller is a wash. So maybe the uh, stamping of feet, hence to wash. Okay, so it's a specific location within the city. And he's telling him, go and meet him at this specific location within the city. And he says, go ahead, Joe. And say unto him, take heed and be quiet. Fear not, neither be faint-hearted to the two, neither be faint-hearted for the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fifth anger of resin with Syria and of the son of Ramalia. So when the two unite in a confederacy, they are considered the smoking tails of a firebrand. So the firebrand is something that you, it's a poker, like a fire poker. So the tail means that they are dealing with an animal that produces fire. So they're being called wicked. They're being called dragons. Want to continue? Okay. <clears throat> because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Ramalia have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us and set a king in the midst of it, even even the son of Tabiel. So they have decided, let us put a proxy king in, and we have even decided whom we will place. And the person that they would place over the Jacobites would be a Syrian, as you see here, Tabiel, or Tabal. Let's continue. Thus saith the Ishi Eloah, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken that it be not a people. Now, Ephraim is a family name, a tribal name, and at this point they were. Israel. So, what is being said here is in within five years, three score and five. So, what, 15 years? Three times five is 15? I, I presume this is what's going three on. It's a, ma it's a math equation, right? So, I think that's 35. Three, three score and five years. They say three score is 60. When Abraham Lincoln said three score, was he saying 60 or is he saying this number multiplied by three? Hmm. So three score and five, Ephraim shall be broken. We live in a modern time where this has already happened so to a great degree. The number of time is not quite relevant unless we're looking for the answer of what the three score truly means. So the point is, is that Ephraim, whom is Israel, shall be broken, that it be not a people. Now, we've been on the channel for a while. We've talked about Tiglath Pilsler III many times. We will see the introduction of him here very soon. Let's continue. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. And the head of Samaria is Ramalia's son. If ye will not believe, Surely ye shall not be established. Now, think about hierarchy, and he's telling you, Israel to these people doesn't mean anything. The king of Israel, and is an Israelite, his people mean nothing to him. The head of Ephraim is a different state. The head of Samaria is this Israelite king. So the hierarchy that's being set up is Ramalia, the king, or excuse me, Ramalia's son. That's Pekka that we, that we spoke of in the first chapter. And then it would be Samaria. Then it would be Israel. So in all reality, Israel's own king is subjugating them and putting a different peoples as the royalty. Now, who is Samaria that they put as this royal people, this elite people within Israel? They're Palestinians. 
And what are Palestinians? They're Canaanites. So an Israelite king put Canaanites as the elite over Israel. Don't this make sense because Ephraim never kicked the people off the land? Never took them off. Let's continue. <clears throat> Moreover, the Ishi spake unto Ahaz, saying, Act the assign of the Ishi, thy Eloha. Act it either in the depths or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not act. Neither will I tempt the issue. Hold on. So here we have ask for a sign. May it be anything that you can think of. So now you've been instructed these nations, even your own brethren, are about to come against you. Ask for a sign. Tell me what you want to see. You want to see the sky rip open? You want to see the oceans merge into one? You want to see the world turned upside down? Remember, Joshua has already stopped the sun at this point. So Ahaz says, I, I, I don't want to say anything stupid. I don't want to tempt you, meaning I don't want to do something. I don't want to accidentally say something that might be against something you already put against someone else. So the, the, the issue is saying, look, it's a sign. It's a sign in the sky. It's a sign in, in the plants. It's a sign uh, 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 in life. It doesn't, you know, it, you're overthinking this, son. Go ahead. <laughs> and he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary me? But ye shall weary my Elohim also. So just, Therefore, just, so he's saying, just pick something, man. You know, like pick a dandelion to grow the size of a tree to be the sign. Pick anything. <laughs> you can't even pick this, but you, you know, oh, right? Weary me, but, you, you know, go weary men. Don't weary me. Continue, sorry. Therefore the issue the therefore the issue himself himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now listen, that's a maiden, right? A virgin is what? A damsel, a maid. It doesn't mean an unplucked woman. It just means a woman of marrying age. Right? Alas. That's not even words we use, right? Is that British words or pirate words? <laughs> so you think about this. Let's go. Let's go. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil. Hold on. Refuse the good. Where do we find butter and honey? What is supposed to come I'm out sorry. of the promised land, huh? Say that again. I said the promised land. Got already telling you where he uh, where he is. Right. Well, what is honey? Honey is syrup. Don't be fooled because it says comb right there. Uh, for the bee to make honey, it has to take the pollen inside of its body, put it where your genitals would be. It's got a pump, 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 and then it turns into a goop, 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 and then he spits on it and sticks it to a wall. That's how you make a honeycomb. So it went to the bee's genital areas, and then went to the bee's mouth, and then it got stuck on the wall. Now, if any human made anything like that, you'd say, oh, no, there's no way. Now, when you sit there and say, is the bee clean? Have you looked in the food laws to see if honey is clean? Because if the most high made trees in syrup comes from trees, 
then is this honey they are saying actually syrup? Are there trees in Israel that produce syrup? Oh yeah. They got maple they got maple trees in Israel. Mm. They got date trees. See, the land of Shinar means date tree. They got date trees in Italy, but they got date trees in California. But are they talking about date syrup? Just they're not talking about honey, bro. That is abominable. It crotch, crotch, crotch mixes. Then the bee spits on it. Don't be fooled by the word honey. Get a dictionary. Let's continue. <clears throat> Let me pick up on 15. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Before, For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken for both her king. Look at that. Hold on. You did not want to choose what the sign will be. So this is what the sign will be. A baby will be born. He shall eat what? Butter and syrup. Milk or cheese, curled milk or cheese and syrup. Or honey. You, you choose, right? Before the child shall know to refuse the evil. And choose good before a child shall know that the land, the land that you what? Abhor means what? Loathe, serving oneself from, right? Serving in, shall be forsaken, shall be loose, relinquished, released of both her kings. Does anybody understand what that even means? The land that you've grown to hate, your own home, homeboy, the kings that are on it oppressing you will have given up by the time this child is born. So if they live at this moment that Ahaz is the king, this prophecy has nothing to do with the timeline Ahaz lives in. You're waiting for a child to be born. When a child is going to be born, before the child know good from evil, the kings of the land will release the land. Think about it. Who owns this land? King George fucked the world. Right? You just watched the Pope who says he owns all the land say Jesus is fake and you watched him bow down to black people. Black Africans. In tight hot suits. Now, did both kings give up this land already? 2020 census, you don't have to call yourself African American anymore. You can pick who you want to be. You live in a time you can imaginarily just write on paper, I'm from Club Med. I'm from the Love Boat. It's 2020, you have the, t the chance of your lifetime to say, I am. On census, I am lost in space. That's right, people. You have the chance of a lifetime to write you are from anywhere. Because <laughs> the land's up for grabs. No one is going to tell us the land is up for grabs. Where is the authority of the king that we preach against? Either one. 
Where is the people saying you can't say that? Come on, Joe. Let's let's continue, sir. <clears throat> Picking up from seventeen, the issue shall shall bring upon thee and upon thy people and upon thy father's house days that have not come, from the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, even the king of Assyria. And it shall come to pass in that day that the issue shall hiss for the fly that is in the uttermost part of the rivers of Egypt and for the, for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. <clears throat> and they shall come and shall rest all of them in the desolate valleys in the holes of the rocks and upon the thorns and upon all thorns and upon all bushes. In the same day shall the issue shave the shave with a razor that is higher, namely by the namely them beyond the river, by the king of Assyria, the head of the hair of the feet, and it shall also consume the beards. No. Has something like that happened yet? Right? In the same day, the, the Ishi, shall the Ishi shave with a razor that is hired, namely, by them beyond the river, by the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the feet also shall come to consume the beard. Has it, your hair fallen out yet? Here, here this is the word that's going to let it all under Consume. Destroy the beard, the hair of the feet. That's radiation, right? Where so much radiation is within the river, uh, within an area, it says by them beyond the river, right? And what what happens when people have cancer? Am I? Oh, hey, is that what really what it is? Don't we have that happening right now? cancer patients the hair on their head falls out the men their beard fall out even the little hairs on the knuckles of your feet fall out see we're waiting for a bomb to drop it's got nothing to do with that now you're, you're gonna have to ask yourself where is this area now you can say it's up uh, it's on the other side of the world but all their flags are here all their flags are here. The Lord will hiss, right? No. In his utmost part of the rivers of Egypt. And for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. What didn't they have all these complaints that the bee was dying off? We've heard that for years now. Bees dying off. People having cancer. It's right here. It's right here. Let's continue. 21. And it shall come to pass in that day that a man shall nourish a young cow and two sheep. And it shall come to pass for the abundance of milk that they shall give, he shall eat butter. For butter and honey shall everyone eat that is left in the land. Now look at that. Stop. Everyone that is left. Butter and honey. How many people can't eat me? Can't, excuse me. How many people can't go without eating me? Right? And this one, he shall have a young cow and two sheep. What is he going to have two sheep for? He's going to have two sheep so that two sheep reproduce and they have a lamb. And every time he's got a sacrifice, he can sacrifice. Because something drove everybody out the land. And this dude is producing butter and honey. How is he producing honey if the bee has di died off? It's the trees, man. <laughs> it's the trees. 
Go ahead, Joe. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass. Um, and it shall come to pass in that day that every place shall be where there were a thousand vines and a thousand silverlings. It shall be. It shall even be for briars and thorns. So the California grape vines will be briars and thorn vines. The 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 Pennsylvania grape growers will be what? What did it say? There it is, briars and thorns. In the land. It's in the land of promise. What does that mean? This is the land that's been promised by prophecy. I promise to give it to you, and if you turn away from me, I promise to mess it up. Let's continue, sir. With arrows and with bows shall men come thither, because all the land shall become briars and thorns. And on all and on all hills that shall be digged with the mattock, there shall not come thither the fear of briars and thorns, but it shall be for the descendants forth of oxen and for the treading of lesser cattle. So arrows and bows shall come <laughs> with men, right? Arrows and bows shall men come thither to where you're at because all the land shall become fruitless and on all hills that shall be digged with the mattock this is a weed device a device for weeding a hoe there shall not come thither the fear of briars. But it shall be for sending forth of oxen. Cattle trade. Get it? And if you're trading cattle and you make stakes, you don't have anything to trade anymore. Now you have to use the domesticated animal for the domestication of the domesticated animal. You make hot dogs, no more milk. The animal lives for 15, 20 years. You have food for 15, 20 years. You cut that animal into a steak, you eat for a week, and then you die. Does anybody understand what's going on? This is the smart system. This is when they put the smart device on your electricity and say, you can only have so much. This is the smart device on your water saying, you can have so much. This is God's smart device. I'm going to turn the land to mud. And you can only use the animals for their original purposes. Good luck. Anything you want to add, Joe? Nah, not much. It's just starting to get juicy, man. It's starting to bust Psalms 83 right in the head. Hope people is paying attention. Ladies and gentlemen, in the seat, you have Joe reading. At the podium, you have Lex Will, the servant reading. Thank you for your time. Shalom. Shalom.